And now it's time for us to discuss more of the headlines and simple keywords with Adam joining us via Zoom. Good morning, Adam. Good morning, Lena. Happy Tuesday. <laughs> Happy Tuesday. All right, let's... Still too early in the week. <laughs> Will you feel better by Thursday? <laughs> Usually. Uh, I think so. Usually, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was going to get on Thursday. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's jump into a closer look at some of these major headlines for the day. Uh, this is our first keyword. Submarine missiles. So North Korea fired two cruise missiles from a submarine in waters off its east coast over the weekend. This is sparking concerns over new developments in the regime's weapons program. What's the latest on this front, Adam? Right, so the North claims they were strategic cruise missiles that were fired from submarines in an underwater launching drill. Now, this marked the first known launches by Pyongyang of submarine-launched cruise missiles, or SLCMs, not SLBMs, uh, though South Korean military officials have not confirmed some of the details. The, J the Joint Chief of Staff says that some of its analysis differs from that of what the North Korean state media is claiming. Now, the North's previous underwater launches involved ballistic missiles, and it also appears to be the first time the North fired multiple missiles from a submarine uh, in a single drill. Uh, the two missiles reportedly traveled 1,500 kilometers in figure eight flight paths. This could put uh, within range U.S. military bases on the Korean Peninsula and in Japan. They could even... Um, reach U.S. territory in Guam as well, if a submarine could operate at a great distance from uh, North Korean waters. Now, the JCS have confirmed that two missiles were indeed fired from subs. The North claiming they were strategic cruise missiles means they have the capability of being mounted with nuclear warheads. Uh, the JCS, however, says that it is difficult to confirm that, as the North needs to first have the ability to miniaturize warheads themselves, which a lot of watchers um, mm. and experts say they have yet to uh, do. Now, North Korea's command of submarine-launched missile systems would make it harder for adversaries to detect launches in advance and would provide the North with retaliatory attack capability. So a bit more of a concern um, for the likes of South Korea and the US. And experts say it would take years, as well as extensive resources, and major technological improvements for the North to build a fleet of submarines that could travel quietly in seas and reliably execute strikes. So it's kind of downplaying those concerns at the moment, say the North is not quite equipped uh, yet for that. Um, the U.S. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan, meanwhile, has stressed that Washington won't be deterred by the regime's provocations and they will not prevent the U.S. from maintaining peace on the Korean Peninsula is that the U.S. is still studying the meaning of the latest launch in terms of their capabilities. Mm. Um, and Price, uh, the, states, uh, the State uh, Department spokesperson, Ned Price, insisted North Korean provocations forced the U.S. to continually reaffirm its security commitment to its ally. And the State Department also said the U.S. is left with no other choice but to enhance its mm. joint defense capabilities um, with South Korea. These comments all come as the Freedom Shield Joint military drills between South Korea and the U.S. are ongoing. They kicked off uh, yesterday, so it is likely that we could see more provocations by North Korea while this 11-day exercise is taking place. Uh, but the U.S. is certainly adamant that these drills are needed for the moment. All right, we'll leave it there so we can move on to our second keyword of the day. SVB crisis. So the financial markets in Korea have remained resilient despite concerns over the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank. The bank's sudden bankruptcy seems to be having a limited impact on South Korea. Mm, that's right. The KOSPI, for example, closed actually higher mm. uh, during yesterday's uh, session. And the Korean won actually gained much ground against the dollar as well. It has been weakening for some time now, but it actually broke that trend uh, yesterday. So it seems like this SVB crisis is not doing much. Um, in terms of affecting uh, the stock markets and uh, the financial market here. Analysts said the higher than expected resilience of the financial markets here reflects investors' general view that the collapse of SVB is more likely to influence the Fed to rethink its aggressive credit tightening rather than resulting in another failure of the banking system. Mm. Now, the high interest rate in the US was deemed to be behind the liquidity shortage of SVB specializing in lending to tech startups, which also struggled to obtain financing. Now, the Fed's monetary policy has been weighing on the Korean financial markets as the interest rate gap between Korea and the U.S. may get wider 
Such a gap has been attributed to the recent capital outflow from Korea, not so much due to the SVB uh, collapse. Now, some analysts say that the U.S. government's commitment to contain the SVB fallout can be a reason for investor confidence in Korean financial markets. Uh, U.S. financial regulators, for example, promised that depositors at SVB will have access to their funds, uh, trying to basically downplay fears that tech startups will struggle to pay their employees this week. Nonetheless, President Yoon has instructed the government to closely examine possible adverse effects of SVB's collapse on Korea's financial markets. The Bank of Korea has also said it will closely monitor any impact, though it did dismiss worries that the issue could turn into a systemic risk. Mm. Uh, the government and the BOK will actually hold a meeting to discuss uh, today to discuss the, the issue as well. Overall, the sentiment here is that the SVB bankruptcy will not be much of a problem for Korea. Uh, Finance Minister Chu kyung ho as well as the BOK Deputy Governor, also believe the bankruptcy will not be a repeat of the 2008 financial crisis and will have limited impacts on the global economy as well, not just here in Korea. Mm. Um, meanwhile, though, the collapse of Signature Bank, another U.S. lender, is also not seeming to be much of a concern in terms of its impacts on Korea's financial markets. But the National Pension Service, as we mm. mentioned yesterday, is concerned that it does has it does has a uh, does have rather shares in both SVB and Signature Bank as well, and the MPS says that it is mulling ways to handle its shares in the two banks uh, and minimize losses. Cosby mm. uh, was unaffected by the SVB collapse, but certainly it seems like stocks of U.S. regional banks took a beating. Stock indexes across Europe suffered worst day of the year. Um, the immediate impact is unavoidable, it seems. But like you said, it does it draw these big comparisons to 2008 financial crisis. It seems the Biden administration is adamant in keeping that in check. Uh, we'll continue to talk about the SVB situation in our world deconstructed portion today, too. In the meantime, let's move on to our third keyword of the day. Double A minus. So Fitch Ratings has announced is maintaining Korea's national credit rating at double A minus with a stable outlook. Tell us the details of the report. Right. So this all comes despite uh, basically a global downturn in the economy. Double uh, A minus is the fourth highest among the Fitch ratings. Korea has maintained this rating uh, for 10 years now. So it's been a while. So even despite turbulent times, it's managed to uh, maintain that relatively mm. high credit rating. Uh, the UK, Belgium, Ireland and Hong Kong are all currently uh, at the same rank as Korea. Uh, Fitch noted that Korea's rating balances robust external finances, resilient macroeconomic performance and a dynamic export sector against geopolitical risks related to North Korea, uh, lagging governance indicators and structural challenges from an aging population. Uh, it forecasts GDP growth to fall to 1.2% this year from 2.6% in 2022 as the economy faces headwinds from what it calls subdued global growth, high interest rates, and still elevated inflation. Uh, the latest forecast is actually down from a 1.9% growth estimate suggested in September. Um, touching on the country's key rates, Fitch said it expects the country's central bank to hold the current level at 3.5% through this year. Fitch added that Korea's inflation is anticipated to reach 2% by the end of this year, pointing out the BOK may also cut the key rate by half a percentage point next year. Now, Korea's exports, meanwhile, are expected to remain sluggish in the first half of this year due to weak performances of semiconductors. How much that will weigh on the economy remains to be seen, but that could be a reason for why, why it downgraded its growth forecast. Mm. Um, Korea's finance ministry, uh, meanwhile, welcomed Fitch's latest update, pointing out it reflected the government's efforts uh, to stabilize the market. All right, with that, we move on to our fourth keyword of the day. Reject compensation. So on the forced labor compensation issue, surviving Korean victims of Japan's wartime forced labor have officially rejected the government's compensation plan through a public foundation. What's the latest? Right, so it's not new news that uh, these victims have been rejecting the proposal, but uh, the, the plan, but now they have officially submitted a statement uh, of rejection to uh, the Foundation for Victims of Forced Mobilization by Imperial Japan. Uh, two victims, Yangum Duck and Kim Jong-ju, delivered that statement. 
Uh, that is the foundation that has been designated by the government to create a fund to compensate the victims. Also, separately, the legal representative of Ichun Shik, who is a surviving plaintiff uh, forced to work under Nippon Steel at the time, also delivered a similar document to the foundation, uh, but expressing the same sentiment nonetheless. Uh, E's lawyer said the document was delivered to explicitly express his position and to be kept as evidence of his objection against the government's plan. Now, a total of 15 forced labor victims are embroiled in legal cases against Japanese companies. The other 12 have not yet issued a statement in reaction to the government proposal. Um, but Yang said she will not take the money even if she started uh, starved to death. Uh, political wrangling over the issue also continued um, as well. The Democratic Party recently unilaterally passed a resolution through the Parliamentary Foreign Affairs Committee, where it holds a majority, urging the government to withdraw its decision. Mm. Uh, all members of the People Power Party boycotted uh, the meeting. Uh, meanwhile, President Yoon, uh, meanwhile, has been um, urging for more projects uh, for cooperation between Korea and Japan. So, yeah, these tensions are likely to continue for some time. The mm. Yoon administration wants better relations and is um, accelerating those efforts uh, with these uh, uh, efforts to uh, um, get these projects underway, mm. uh, cooperation projects with Japan uh, going. Uh, but of course, these victims uh, and uh, related civic groups mm. are still not happy and they will be continuing their protests against the plan. Mm. We're also keeping tabs on the upcoming Korea-Japan summit. Uh, we'll see if anything comes out of that meeting to... I don't want to say subside that tension, but mm. the efforts are still there anyway. Let's move on to our final keyword of the day. Mask-free transport. So Korea's top COVID-19 advisor, Jong gi has hinted at the possibility of the mask-wearing rule on public transportation being lifted. The government wanted this to be lifted first. Uh, what did he have to say? Yeah, so we have been mentioning on the segment before that uh, there will be a likelihood of the mask rule on public transport being lifted. And now it's coming out of the words of the top infectious disease expert, Chong gi He said there will be no major difficulties in uh, lifting the rule. Mm. He added that a decision may come uh, after tomorrow. And he noted that most experts on a COVID advisory board agree that the public transport mask mandate should be changed to a recommendation um, health officials will be meeting tomorrow on the matter. Chung says he thinks they will scrap the mandate. Uh, while no dates have been mentioned, speculations have arisen that the rule will likely be lifted from March 20th if officials approve the change tomorrow. If the move is given the go-ahead, mask rules will be fully lifted in the country with the exception of medical facilities, mm. uh, including pharmacies as well. So don't forget, if you are, for example, um, in a shopping mall and you need to go to the pharmacy in that shopping mall, you need to equip your mask just in case. So it's always handy to have one on hand. Uh, now, the rule of the one-week isolation period for COVID patients still remains as well. So mm. we'll have to see if that issue is also discussed. I've seen people at those marketplaces just opening the door of pharmacy because I'm, I'm assuming they don't have a face mask and they're screaming into the door like, I don't have a mask, can you give me this? And I was like, that's new. <laughs> right, I, I, I have to say, uh, I went into a pharmacy that was in a building that didn't require masks. Yeah. Uh, and I did forget my mask uh, and I kind of guiltily walked in, but uh, nothing was said at, at that mm. particular pharmacy. So. I think there is a little bit of leeway, yeah. but it is still a mandate for the time being. I'm not <laughs> saying you should take advantage of uh, these uh, pharmacy owners' goodwill, but uh, yeah, still have one handy just in case. Just have one handy. Thank you very much, Aaron, for today's discussions. We'll speak to you again tomorrow. You're very welcome. See you tomorrow. If you're listening to our program using the podcast service, just a reminder that we do go live Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Korea Standard Time. So tune in and help us make the show more informative by giving us your input. See you bright and early on Good Morning Seoul.